So this little video is going to be a little different than everything else. This is my workflow and process of how I confirm symmetry of my uh, 3D scans prior to me designing anything. So that way, the way I like to work with is I work with half an object and then I mirror it and I 3D print it. So here what you're seeing is a real CAD model. This is a real OEM 3D asset that uh, when I was doing some freelance work for a company, uh, they sent me this data to create some images for them. And this is as real as it gets. Besides having the actual NURBS CAD model, this is it. Like this has beautiful details. The surfaces are flawless. The reflections are gonna be perfect. And the reason why I bring this up is real CAD models come with a lot of detail, as you can see, the mounting points, all the guts, not all the time, but because for marketing, what they typically do is they strip the, uh, the things you don't see. So anything like mechanical transmission, all that would come in a separate file if the client wants you to create uh, content of that. So for this project, I just needed to create some exterior shots of this vehicle. And that's why they sent me the exterior as well as the interior, which is not loaded in this file. Now, why do I bring this up? So here, for example, we have the bottom of the car with all the mounting points. Here is my 3D scan that I created of my WRX, as well as the bottom where I plan and develop and design the front lip, which would mount to these areas. If I isolate it, as you can see, I only scanned the half of the car because this is all I want to work with. I do not want to work with the other side because that's just going to be a pain having to make so many fine tune adjustments. I want to trust the system. And what I mean by that is for those that don't know, whenever they develop and design these cars, they only work with half a car. A lot of times it is a symmetrical object. It's not asymmetrical. They'll add like the gas tank and miscellaneous details. But like, for example, this is the bottom uh, liner. This is kind of like same concept as we are looking at here, except, you know, this is a cheap car compared to this. So this has a lot more guts to it. And what I'm going to do is just for the proof of concept, I'm going to show how this works. So in XYZ space, when you get an OEM CAD model, they're typically zeroed out, meaning the uh, the center line of the car is always down the middle of the, uh, the screen or the XYZ origin. So it's perfectly symmetrical and set up to be that way. So the reason why I bring that up is let's say we have our underbody, our little mounting point. And so let me go to bottom view. Uh, oh, right, right here. So I am going to create a reference plane. So let's go here. Let's make it easier. And we'll just kind of put the plane, let's say right here. Actually, better yet, I'll make a circle because that is going to be a perfect circle of that circle. So we'll just shift it over here. There we go. Just like that. And now I'm just going to change this diameter a little bit, make it match roughly that shape. And there's a reason why I'm doing this, because if you trust the system, and this is to show the symmetry element, if I take this and I say, okay, we are going to work with our XYZ uh, origin of 000, I want to mirror this over to the other side if I do it. As an instance, as you can see, my circle is perfectly matching up because it's symmetrical. This is how the, the car companies usually like to do it. So for example, another option right here, this little uh, bracket area to fit uh, whatever the heck you want to call it. So let's go here. We'll, we'll move this one down here. Oh, working on origin mode. So we'll go back to the bottom view. So we'll put it right at the edge. If I do the mirror effect again, using the, where is it? Oh, so here we go. Oh, why did it move the object? No, I didn't. So this is actually offset a little bit. And I think this is because this is where the, uh, the toe hook is. So maybe that is why that object is not perfectly symmetrical. Let's see what we got going on. That probably is. Yeah. So there's the circle. So that's where you would, install the tow hook so that, like i mentioned there's some things that are asymmetrical but for the most part the mounting holes all that junk they try to make it symmetrical so again if i was to test this idea on this area 
I'm just going to work in the bottom view over here. So let's go over here. We'll create a circle right there. <laughs> and then, and I'm just going to do it quickly. Right here. Two circles, we'll make them lime green so they're easy to see. Use the origin XYZ. Mirror it. In theory, they pop right into place. So th that's why I bring this up, is if it's proper CAD data, it's symmetrical. When they design these cars, they make them symmetrical. Now, why is that important to my 3D scan? As I mentioned, I'm only working with half the car. And if we use that logic of these things are symmetrical, this right here, this center mounting area for whatever the heck this pin is, this, in theory, is my point of origin for 0, 0, 0 in terms of the car symmetry point. And the beauty of it is we have three or four reference lines. We have the horizon line, we have the vertical line, and then we have this 45 degree line. So when I was aligning my CAD model, the first thing I did was I made a reference marker here and here. And I said, if you two form a straight line, we are perfectly... Uh, vertically aligned or whatever you want to call it, horizontally aligned. But needless to say, the left and the right side should in theory mirror. If And then what I did was this side and this side to make that a straight line. And the reason why I did that, if it's straight, it means there's no weird skew and rotation to the bumper kind of like this, because now that's going to create a nice and even thing. So then what I did was I mirrored my object and as you can see, and I'll change the object colors. So we'll go one with green, one with yellow. As you can see, they're both lining up pretty darn well. So because it is 3D scan data, it's never going to be like an OEM CAD model, as you see here. Like that is just as smooth and flawless as it gets. But for us, when we don't have access to a CAD model, we have to work with what we have. And right now, this is what I have. The only problem is, is um, again, I bought the car from Copart and they just manhandled the crap out of these cars on the lot. So they used the forklift and they actually damaged the front bumper. This front bumper was in excellent condition when it came to the front end and the bottom of the lip. And their forklift actually cracked the front grille, the front top, and uh, created these dents. So it is what it is. It's a Copart car. I can't really do anything about that. So now that I found my symmetry point or the origin of 000, zero, zero I made it uh, or I flipped it, I mirrored it. So now my next game plan is, okay, how good is this? And without me actually 3D printing something, I don't know. And that's where it gets kind of annoying and tricky. But I also don't want to dedicate so much time and effort to designing something only to find out it's not like not symmetrical or it won't fit properly. So my next step is I go in and I create a rough layout, kind of like a, a really, really simple 3D model, but it's a 3D model that's going to, in theory, line up to these origin points. And I create a 3D print of the whole front lip, and it sucks because it's a lot of material to 3D print. But then once I connect it, I actually uh, go in on the car, remove these clips, and I try to install it. And then if it fits properly, that's how I know it's okay. I'm in a good spot from a symmetry point. Now I could have fun and start designing. So what I'm gonna try to do is uh, share some photos of my old GR86 front lip project. And I'm probably, well, I'm gonna pause the video because I gotta find it. All right, I found the file. Uh, I did take some photos. I don't know where they are, but anyhow, so this was the 3D scan and here's, Here's what I did for my test. So I actually just designed this little bit to fit the bumper, as you could see, as good as possible. And the key points were right here, where the mounting brackets are. And I actually 3D printed this section. And then when I put it on the car, they actually popped right into place and they worked. So then I had the confidence of, okay, it actually works out. I could now go into the design stage. And I started designing the rest of the, as you can see, it's symmetrical. And so that's where the beauty of that kind of workflow comes into play is so like right here, this was the final version. Um, I never made this lip, but the final version for the design stage, as you can see, 
all the mounting brackets, everything in theory is right there. So that way the lip bolts right up. So that's what I'm going to do for this WRX project. And I might actually just focus. <coughs> Sorry about that. I might just focus on this front area only because um, if this whole, this whole, this whole and this whole line up and I kind of have the body lines, if you will, working as well. Again, because my my front end is damaged, um, I have to finesse it a little bit on my own. But I might I might actually try to fix it, or I may have to buy a new section, depending on how this whole design stage works out. But anyhow, that's why I bring this up: is I'm going to design a little simple object to 3D print, so I could go on my car and try to test fit it. Because if it fits. And I'm going to try to make these lines right here as my reference markers. So that way when I install it and I could see how much of an offset there is with fitment. But the game plan is if it does line up and it bolts right up, then I know what I did with the symmetry is fantastic. This is my origin of working, which means this is good. So then I rotate my fender to match because what I did was I pushed a little bit of that fender scan into this area. So now I took my fender scan data and I overlaid it and tried to make it match up as perfect as possible, which then kind of is a guide for my side skirt, which that matches up as you can see. So there's the side skirt, there's the fender, everything's working out, which then it, it, it helps assemble the whole car with the ability to have it be symmetrical. And that's the key ingredient here is only modeling and spending time on half the car. So you could just flip it and then have two of the same identical perfectly mirrored objects, which in theory should fit perfectly the same because as you see from this AMG GTR, they're, they're symmetrical. The front fenders, for example, if I was to mirror this one, and then in 3D uh, Max, you could center the origin to the object. So for example, if I make this fender blue, and then I align it perfectly to this, as you can see, it's a perfect one-to-one -one replica. And that's how CAD works with the real automotive industry. For the most part is they try to make everything symmetrical. So even if we go to this back end quarter panel, which has the gas tank, for example. So if I was to flip it, just like we did on the other part, make a little color change, then align it to this one. As you can see, besides this hole, which they add later on, they first build the perfect foundation for symmetry. Even the mounting points, everything, the game plan is to make it all as symmetrical as possible. And then after that, they just go in and they cut an opening for where the hole is going to be and only focus on adjusting that one little section. So that's why whenever I work on my CAD models and my design projects, game plan is always symmetry. So you can work with half the car, half the object, half the time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to quickly model this. I'm not going to record anything just because I have so many videos on that. I'm going to 3D print it and then I'm going to make a little recording of me in the garage test fitting <clears throat> and it could be good or it could be bad, but I will record the process so we could figure out what's happening. Worst case scenario, if this is not working out in my favor, I will go in, add more markers on the driver's side and I will scan the whole bottom of the lip just to figure out where I'm going wrong or if maybe this actual part is damaged to a point where it's ruining the uh, <clears throat> the body lines of these markers, which again, to me, this is a, an amazing reference of, of mirroring. Like this is the middle of the car right here and it's lining up perfectly where we have it. So I didn't scan enough of the top, but I'm not designing anything on the top. I'm only designing the, uh, the bottom, the sides and so on and so forth. So, Yep, I'm done recording this section. I'm going to do a quick little design, 3D print it, and then I'll hop into the garage with the proper camera, and we'll see what the heck we end up with. And here we have it. So please excuse the crappy audio. I don't feel like really setting up the DJI speakers and all that, but wanted to show you the test 3D print. So I made this 2 millimeters. It's really thin, so it makes it a little annoying to connect i use my popsicle trick on the outside just because the inside i wanted to uh not add any kind of uh tolerance issues so here's again the proof of uh concept and show that the idea does work 
as I mentioned, this was my point of reference for uh, symmetry right here. Sorry, the camera. I got to take a look at what I'm showing. So I used this marker as my proof of the reference. As you can see, it is symmetrical. Now, the fitment itself has some uh, bugs. And I think that's due to the fact that this side, as you can see, has the damage. This one has its own damages. These guys at Copart, they just use forklifts and they just full send it when they move these cars around. So they did damage it, unfortunately. So I might have to replace this whole bottom trim piece. Um, but with that being said, this is the key ingredient is the mounting points worked. All of them work great. And so here's the other thing is because this was the actual side that I designed it to, and now take a look at the tolerances. Like, so for example, here we almost have no edge at all. Here we have almost no edge at all. Here we have, let's say a little bit of a lip. It's barely any, but there's a lip here, almost identical. And then as far as uh, the outside edges goes, so take a look here. We're really tight on the crevice. And then we have maybe like two, three, you know, about three to four millimeters of a gap between uh, where this indent is. We come over here, very, very similar results. So the exciting thing is, is it worked. I was able to only scan half the bumper. I did my alignment in 3D Max based on that little reference marker. I did symmetry and it is symmetrical, which is fantastic. So now I could work on laying out <laughs> the rest of the design, focusing on only working on this side of the car. And then when I make it symmetrical, in theory, it's gonna fit right up. So I know there's gonna be a little bit of an offset just because it is what it is. So maybe what I'll do is I'll take my symmetry modifier and skew it over by let's say two millimeters that might fix the uh, the little distortion we'll get along the way if it makes sense because what imperfection we have here is going to keep increasing as we get as far away to the side and so the idea is the reason why i want it to be so perfect is the lip that i'm designing is going to come out and it's going to flow into the uh the wide body fender area and so for it to all make sense and look visually appealing, all the lines have to match up. So anyhow, very, very exciting thing to see. Um, I'm glad based on me making this video and my idea, it actually is successful. So hopefully it helps other people kind of get a game plan of what they could do when they're 3D scanning and designing. So that way, if you're new to this, this could be a great way for you to save time. And uh, if you know what you're doing, then don't worry about this. This is a useless video. So this is not for you. If you know what you're doing, look away. Don't, don't bother with this crap. But if you're new to design and new to scanning and all that nonsense, hopefully this helps you. So, yep, another little video. This is a short one, but now I'm going to be working on slowly scanning the rest of the car. I threw a bunch of markers on here. This thing looks like, it look, looks like it's got polka dots all over the place now. So I threw them all over there. And then on the back side, I threw some as well. And today I was kind of game planning. I'm actually going to try to probably redesign that whole rear end. I don't know what the hell they did here. Because this looks pretty uh, just weird and obnoxious. And then the front is pretty subtle. And so, yeah, I'm going to do that. And I might potentially go with a one side exhaust only. And if that's the case, then I'm going to make a bumper where it only has one exhaust opening. So that way I don't have two exhaust openings with only one exhaust. It was gonna look stupid. I think that's the dumbest thing when people do that. So that way with me doing it for myself, I could design it where it's gonna have one opening and then this is just gonna have a flow and all makes sense. So that's a that's a whole different type of project. But anyhow, just a little little update of what's going on there and then for the wing, I kind of want something obnoxious like I have on my GTR, but I don't really know if I'm going to make it. I don't think I will. Unless I go with the duck bill, if I go big, I'm just going to buy one because, I mean, this I love that wing. So if I throw something on this car, granted, this car is going to be way slow. I'm not really doing any performance mods like I did on this car. But anyhow, way off track now. The focus was this thing and proof of concept. It works. It's symmetrical. It bolted right up. So yeah, I'm done. Bye.